everybody. Terry D Lab in the lab coat again. All right. Now this time I'm going to show you a really cool Heathkit IT28 capacitance bridge that I've refurbished. Thing works great. Very classic piece of test equipment. Can be used to measure resistance, inductance, and capacitance. And it utilizes a super cool green magic eye. So let me show you this thing. I think you'll like it. All right, so here she is. The Heathkit IT28 capacitor checker, as they call it. Actually, it's a bridge. It can measure resistance and capacitance, and you can hook up external coils and do some uh, turns ratio measurements, okay? Now, when I first got it, the jacks down here, the input banana jacks, were all seized up. They wouldn't even move. Now, here's one of them. This is the original that I pulled off of it. And if you can see, uh, the aluminum here has corroded so badly that you can't undo the binding post. So because of that, you can't hook up your test leads and you can't hook up capacitors because if you were to try to spin this off to be able to get your component under test in the hole, it won't let you do it. And the other problem is it's so badly corroded in here that even if you were able to plug in a banana jack, you're going to get a terrible connection. I don't know why Heathkit used aluminum conductor type jacks for these binding posts, but if you get one of these things, get rid of them because they're junk. All right, so let's take a look underside. Now, these are the new jacks that I installed, and they're also vintage jacks, but what's nice about these is they don't use aluminum for the material. This is just, you know, standard metal jacks. So what's nice is you can solder your leads to them. Whereas with the aluminum jacks, they had a nut and some little like spade terminals that were trapped under that nut. And of course it corroded too. So you know what that would do to the quality of your signal. Now one thing I don't know if I pointed out is the magic eye when I got this thing was dead. And I thought, oh no, because that's a real expensive tube. Well, I got lucky. I looked out in my old tube supply and there was a brand new Sylvania. So it's in it, and it's working great. And of course, the other thing you always want to do is get rid of the old crusty filter caps. So yeah, these are radio type, but I glued them to the chassis and wired them in, and they work perfectly. I also deoxed all the switches in this thing. So it's working really good. Let me show you that. Okay, so for our first test, let's just do a simple resistance measurement. Okay, and I got my digital meter here. So over here we got about a one meg resistor. Shows slightly under that, but close enough. So let's put this guy in the binding post. Crank it on down. Now pay attention to the bridge up here. I'm on the times 10K. So you'd expect to see that guy open somewhere around 100, okay? I'm advanced from that, but let's go back. And there it is. You see the eye opening, closing. Might be able to get a little closer here so you can see that better. So you can see the eye doing its thing. Okay. Right there on the scale at 100. So it's measuring that really well. All right, next I got a 100 ohm resistor here. All right. Disconnect him. We'll go to uh, R times 1. How's that sound? Get this guy in here. And since we're on R times one, once again, I seem to hit that right off the bat, okay? You can see the bridge doing its thing. Boom, there it is. So it's working really well on resistance. It's right on the money. That thing's right on 100, okay? Let's do some capacitance with it. All right, so what I have here is a Sprague Orange Drop 0.022 microfarad cap. I'm on C at 0.01, okay? You see the bridge is closed right now. As we approach two, you should see it open. There it is. Okay. There it is. Boom, boom. Perfectly. Okay. Nice and smooth. Now let's put an electrolytic in it because this thing also has a built-in power supply that can charge them and then check for leakage. Here we go. One real nice feature of this capacitor checker versus other ones on the market is it can actually charge capacitors. 
and then check them for leakage. And this is really valuable when you're dealing with uh, old power supply caps, like in guitar amps, okay? So what I've done, I've selected 50 volts, and we're gonna go to leakage, and when I flip that switch, you'll see 50 volts or so come up on my meter. Now watch the magic eye. See how it opened there? It charged the cap, and then it's telling you there's no leakage current through that capacitor. So this is a good test. When you're done, you put the switch to discharge, that kills the voltage so that it's safe to remove the capacitor under test. All right, so you can see that the uh, Heathkit capacitor checker here, especially the IT28, is a valuable asset to a repair shop because not only can it verify caps, but it can charge them and then look for leakage, which is a really nice thing to have in your repair shop. Now me, when old amps come in, I just swap out the caps anyway and put in new ones. However, if you had a batch of them that you want to verify and make sure they're good and maybe even rejuvenate them, this capacitor checker can do it. Now you don't find very many of these in good shape anymore, especially the magic eyes. Those things are going bad, they're weak, and I'll tell you what, they're getting pricey. So if you find a good IT28, snag it. And hopefully you get the original manual because those things are about as pricey as the instrument. Hope you enjoyed the demo.